for years there was not an understanding that electricity and magnetism were related. Uh, I think it was Hans Orsted was one who uh, discovered this and uh, this lecture is going to talk about Orsted's discovery. Basically um, the electricity and magnetism were treated as two separate um, physical phenomena. There wasn't a, a known link between them but in 1819 uh, Danish physicist Hans Christian Orsted discovered the connection by accident while making uh, while lecturing about electric circuits. So he's teaching about electric circuits and he has a magnetic device with him. I think it was a compass. Um, so he noticed that the compass needle uh, that was placed just above a wire carrying a current would take up a position nearly perpendicular to the wire only when current was flowing. And if the current flowed in the opposite direction then it would be deflected in the opposite direction. So he figured there must be some sort of some sort of uh, uh, relationship between these two, or there must be some sort of interaction between magnetism and electricity. He then uh, figured that uh, the shape, direction, and the strength of the magnetic field um, around the, the uh, straight conductor um, uh, they could all be determined um, using uh, uh, his understanding of, of the physics of the electricity. So let's look at what happens when we have a conductor. This is a, uh, um, an electrical conductor going through a piece of paper and we have iron filings on that paper. What you see is the iron filings orient themselves in the direction of the magnetic field and the magnetic field appears to be concentric circles around the um, conductor. The direction of the field depends on the direction of the current. So if the current's going um, in, in uh, one direction, the field will be oriented uh, one way, uh, clockwise for example, the field's going, or the current's going the other direction the field will orient counterclockwise. So specifically, if we have a current going up, then the um, field will be counterclockwise when we're going up, and it will be clockwise when the current's going down. The strength of the field is weaker the farther we get from the wire. So there's a stronger field close to the wire and a weaker field farther away from the wire. These are some notes to write down about the magnetic field of a straight conductor. And if you feel you can, you may want to copy down that image as well. So let's choose the diagram below that best illustrates the strength of the magnetic field around a conductor. Um, in this case, C is uh, best because um, we're trying to show that there is a stronger field so the lines are closer towards the conductor and weaker farther away. Uh, whereas A and B, um, A is, has everything equidistant so that implies that the field is the same throughout. Uh, B implies that there's a weaker field closer and a stronger field farther away. You use a current carrying conductor to produce a magnetic field. Which three properties of the magnetic field can you control? You can uh, turn the field on or off by turning the current on or off. Um, you can change the direction by making the current go in the opposite direction. And you can change the strength of the field by increasing the amount of current. So the, there's a direct relationship between the amount of current and the strength of the field. The higher the uh, amperes going through the wire, the stronger the magnetic field will be. And this leads us to Orsted's principle, which is whenever a charge moves through a straight conductor, a circular magnetic field is created in the region around the conductor. In Orsted's time, the Verilian theory assumed that the electric current was directed from the positive to the negative terminal. So we made these rules of electromagnetism using that conventional current flow. Um, that is why uh, um, it's important to know both the conventional current flow and the electron flow. And we'll, uh, we'll see a little bit about how we use that um, on this slide here, uh, because 
there's a rule to determine what direction the field will go and it's called the right hand rule. Essentially this rule is that if you place your thumb in the direction of the current flow, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field, that circular magnetic field. How do we represent these when we're, we essentially, uh, if, we're, if we're showing current going into or out of um, a page or uh, uh, a, a plane, um, we can show this with uh, these two symbols here. The X symbol uh, implies a current moving away from you or going into your page. And a dot symbol implies a current coming out of the page or coming towards you. So the X and the dot, make sure you're aware of what those mean um, because we're going to be using those uh, uh, in this magnetism uh, part of this unit. Uh, so here it says to copy each diagram in your notebook and draw the magnetic field. So here's my conductor. So now if this is my wire and I put my fingers around it, my fingers are going up here and they're going down on this side. So if they're going down here, they're going into the page. So I put X's and I put dots here because they're coming out on that side. Um, for the next one, uh, this would be when my, uh, with my conductor pointing down. So if I point my thumb down and I put my hand around my pen this way, my fingers curl around this way. So for that one, my fingers show the curl, so I have to show my arrows like this. So that's my, uh, my flow around that. Let's check on another question. So for four, it says copy each diagram into your notebook and label the direction of the conventional current. Uh, so in the first situation, um, I have, uh, so I have my, let's see how I'd have to orient my fingers. So. In this first situation, uh, the curl is going this way. So if my fingers are curling this way, my thumb has to point to the right. So in my first situation, you can see it again here, my thumb would be pointing to the right. So there'd be an arrow pointing to the right. In the second situation, the curl is this way. So here my thumb would point to the left. So my direction for B would be to the left. For C, my curl is this way, so my thumb would point up. That means uh, if I have my thumb pointing up, it would be a dot in the center of that uh, conductor for C. In which way would these um, compasses point? Well, uh, for the first one, um, my fingers would curl up on that side so um, we would have uh, it pointing to the north in that case uh, when it's on the other side um, it would be pointing to um, it would be pointing down to the south here's a question that says you're driving east in your car and your car is equipped with a magnetic compass display in your rear view mirror you happen to drive underneath an electrical wire that is labeled high current. You notice that your compass immediately displays south. In which direction is the conventional current flowing in the wire? So if you were uh, traveling east and then you travel uh, underneath um, this, this tunnel and it changes your 
uh, or it starts to show your direction as south, um, that means that uh, there must be a current flow going to the west using the right hand rule to show that, uh, to have an, a south output. André Marie Ampere um, was fascinated by Orsted's discovery, so he investigated other aspects of electricity and magnetism. Ampere took two parallel wires and conducted an experiment to see if wires would attract or repel one another when currents were sent through them. So in which direction would these wires move? Well, in the case where uh, on the left, uh, where we have a, um, our magnetic field getting stronger between, they would move closer together. In the case on the right, where they're opposing, they would move farther away from each other. Orsted's discovery further changed the world, leading to new kinds of technology such as motors and generators. He demonstrated that we could use electricity to produce magnetism. Controlling magnetism means that we can turn it on and off and change its strength by increasing or decreasing the current. We can also control the direction of the magnetic field by changing the direction of the electric current. So all these things were things that we were able to do because of Orsted's discovery.